I was a 18 year old girl with a mixed race baby in a push chair on a council estate. I, I, that was me. No, I, I, I know why I'm here. It's because you're doing I've had two babies and I'm only 12. You are run out of order because I was 13 when I had my second child. So I've seen terrible acts of class violence throughout my life. It was a miracle no one was killed, said one police commander. The class system does not benefit anyone. Lisa McKenzie, Dr. Lisa McKenzie, I should say. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us uh, on Divided. Um, for, for those who don't know you, for those who don't know your area of expertise, what do you do? I'm a working class academic. Um, I'm a lecturer, I'm a sociologist. And the reason I say working class academic is because those two things usually seem at odds because can you be a, a working class person and an academic? Um, I come from a, a small mining community in Nottinghamshire called Sutton Ashfield, um, and I lived there until I was 18. My granddad was a miner, my great granddad was a miner, my dad was a miner, uh, my mum worked in the factories making tights. I'd been told from being a very small child by my granddad at his knee. Mm. You know, we, Lisa, we are working class, we are good people, we keep the lights on. You know, we, we're not like those other people. You know, we don't send our kids away because we don't want them. We don't, you know, we're not cruel to foxes and animals. Um, you know, we, we're good people, we're keeping the lights on. We knew that we were at the bottom. We knew that other people thought that we were at the bottom, but, you know, as a young person growing up there and as a child, I thought we were brilliant. And exactly what does class mean to you? Class is a power political structure. It's about a relationship. Mm -hmm. So this is what I found this is what I found out through going to university. What I knew about my life through experience, I knew that this was happening. But when I went to university, I understood that this was a power relationship. Mm -hmm. This is about the structure of society. You know, we hear a lot about aspiration mm -hmm. nowadays. You know, it's the aspiration. Working class people don't have enough aspiration, which is absolutely not true. Working class people, if anything, has got too much aspiration. Because what... <laughs> they... Sorry, what do you mean by that? I mean, how can one possess too much aspiration? Well, well... Don't, you, don't you mean by that, actually, you know, sometimes you reach, uh, exceed your grasp? Well, I suppose how I would, I would say that is... I've got a book, and in this book I'd written, when I grow up, I want to be an author. I want to write. You know, that was not... I, I knew that that was not really going to happen because once I'd got... Once I was in school, that sort of passion I had for writing, and just... It, it wasn't ever encouraged. It was, you know, you go in in the factory. And if you go into schools today, kids want to be doctors and lawyers in working-class communities. The... The reality is that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. that's the, and that's why I say too much aspiration, because there are, there's a reality to this. It also feeds into sort of culture. And in Britain, it's absolutely ridiculous that we don't acknowledge it, mm. because I teach students from all over the world. The first thing everybody ever says to me is, the minute you get off a plane in the UK, you notice this class division mm. straight away. It's so noticeable. So we read each other as British people, as we're classed mm -hmm. and we read each other. We can talk to each other, me and you could talk to each other through the, perhaps the, the way that we speak, mm -hmm. the things that we're saying. Oh, we're, those, those are signifiers that we, we're, sig we're yeah. putting out. Yeah, we're when... signifying. Mm -hmm. and, and, when, and that's fine because we do that with everybody. But when you are using that as a, a hierarchy and particularly related to values and morals, who is good and who is bad, then that's a real problem because before, you know, for working class people, you are red. Before you even get in the room, there is also, there's all these things that have been thought about you before you even get there. Mm -hmm. And that's why I suppose I always say I'm a working class academic mm -hmm. because those two things never go together. An academic is somebody that is learned and read and intelligent, whereas the working class, the British working class, definitely is not. Well, let's just take, take a look at one of the examples that you actually use in, 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 in your classes at Middlesex University. A, a, a figure from the working class that many people will recognise, uh, Vicky Pollard. No, I, I know why I'm here. It's because you're doing I've had two babies and I'm only 12. You are run out of order because I was 13 when I had my second child. Anyway, have you been talking to Aaron Peel? Because let me tell you about Aaron Peel, right? Because listen to this, Trisha. No, no, just listen yeah, to Trisha, me for just a second. Because the hand ain't listening. Because Aaron Peel's like a total batty boy and he ain't got no pubes. And he's well out of order because he's been completely going around saying that I like smoke and drank when I was pregnant. But all I did was smoke like two packs of fags a day, drink like 50 pints of steak by tonight. But apart from that, I've never done nothing. So you can well shout Trisha Goddard, you total manger. Um, you're not in trouble. You're not in trouble. And when I show this to my students, my first year students at Middlesex University, mostly who are working class actually mm -hmm. at Middlesex University, 
When I show this in a classroom, there is a deadly silence afterwards. What was the difference between, okay, the character of Vicky Pollard and, for example, any of the characters from the royal family? You know, now that, yeah. which, which is an example which people, people both working class, middle class, have always appreciated yeah. and see in an entirely different yeah. light to, to the Vicky Pollard character. What was the difference? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's the shadings of class. I mm -hmm. mean, that's, that's the absolute difference, isn't it? Because the writers were working class. Mm -hmm. Um, and they came at it from this very sympathetic view and, a, and a, an experience of being working class, sitting around watching television with your family, a lot of love there. Vicky Pollard and the Little Britain stuff has not come from that, it's come from laughing at. It's come from two privately educated men, mm -hmm. um, wealthy, very sort of upper middle class, laughing at. I mean, there's one scene where Vicky Pollard, I mean, this is absolutely disgusting at 13 she's had two babies or something and it's supposed to be funny and she swaps one of her babies for a westlife cd that is not funny when you you know when these stereotypes are constantly all over the place about you but you, I mean, you mentioned there that, um, uh, that, that the writers behind the Vicky Pollard sketch, you know, were privately educated th themselves. Does that mean that someone who hasn't experienced a, a life cannot write about that life, cannot satirise that life? Mm. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. Um, what it means is that there is a there is a shade and a subtlety mm -hmm. between understanding experience um, and laughing at and cruelty and i think we found that with with the sort of the jeremy kyle stuff yeah, because we bone. finally realized that this is this is not on i was a 18 year old girl with a mixed race baby and a push chair on a council estate i i was that was me so i'm i'm critiquing this from very close up but also i'm an academic as well i can't deny that i've had this education so i'm critiquing it from afar as well so i'm not being sanctimonious but what i am doing is that i'm acknowledging that there's a power difference mm -hmm. there and the power difference is important to people's lives so can, what can we do I, I i love this quote from george orwell which you probably won't like but um and george orwell again eton scholar yep. but had a very very interesting and astute understanding of class in britain why because he was part of that mm -hmm. um he said when when sort of the middle class go to the working class and say what can we do for you to help you the the working class should say commit suicide <laughs> because the fact is mm -hmm. is the middle class are actually soaking up and squatting are in, and are in the way. Now, I'm not saying literal suicide, but what I am saying is, you know, there needs to be a debate about who is getting where and how they are doing it. So you do like a bit of class war from time to time. I love time. it. I'll be honest, I love class war. <laughs> Go on, explain that. Explain, because that, that, that to me sounds a, a slightly worrying thing, yeah. given how close we're sitting together, yeah, yeah. But, but, but also needs an explanation. No, I, I mean, um, there are many th attributes about being working class that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of it is the, I suppose, the argy-bargy and the, the humour that we have. I honestly believe that middle-class people are not funny. Mm -hmm. I think that working-class people are funny. And so I think when we start talking about class war, there's a tongue-in-cheek thing about that as well. We can, you know, we can, we can take people down through humour as well. I also think that these things are important. We have to talk about them. Yeah, they have to be challenged. Um, I protest, I write, I get on the streets, I talk about yes. class inequality, not because, um, you know, I'm some sort of jealous working class woman looking up going, if only I could be this. It's actually because I think it's unfair, it's damaging, it hurts people. Do you think that the class structure, the class, the, the structural issues that we have in the United Kingdom that stem from class, do you think those can be rectified without conflict? And by conflict, I include violent conflict? Um, no, I'll be honest, I'll be honest. I mean, living through the miners' strike, and again, you've got to remember my experience. I, at 60, as a 16-year-old girl, I saw terrible, terrible violence and class conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw my mum being dragged across um, a car park by the police and being arrested. I saw my aunties being dragged across the park, car park. The police threw me across a, a car park and told me to go away. I was 16. So I've seen terrible acts of class violence throughout my life. 
plus the, you know, the symbolic acts of class violence. The violence that happens to us every single day, a hundred times. You know, the, the, the girl that goes into the housing office and puts her name on the list and tries to get a house for her and her children, and she's judged immediately as, she's walk, as she walks in. That happened to me as a 18 year old girl, you know, trying to get onto the council house list. And the woman behind the counter saying, well, you know, you should have thought about that before you had kids. Violence. Yeah, it's violence. violence. But, 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 and I'm, I'm obviously Symbolic not... Symbolic violence. But in the circumstances we're, we're talking about at some point, some revolution, be it a revolution of the mind or a revolution in politics. It has to be both. Yeah. I mean, it has to be all. It has to be all things. We have, to, we have to debate, we have to talk, we have to say uncomfortable things to each other, like being working class in Britain is hurtful and it's damaging people and it's hurting them. It's hurting them mentally and physically. It's hurting the country. Nobody's benefiting out of this. I've also taught students that are being, that middle-class students that are, that are coming through private education that are being privately educated almost to death. They come with stress and mental health and that is just so the middle-class can keep their place. This is class, the class system does not benefit anyone. Uh, well, look, at the very least, I hope, uh, you know, come the revolution, you remember that we invited you on Divided to discuss it beforehand. At Lisa McKenzie, Dr Lisa McKenzie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.